So here we are. Oh, I thought I'd just show you what our workshop looks like. Some of you don't know what we do. So we're primarily a water jet company and we make uh, R&D uh, prototype material for various customers. We can cut pretty much anything we want to with the water jet from very fine uh, products like this um, very small gasket. Um, obviously we can cut larger material. Nearly anything that can be cut that we can get into the building will be cut on the water jet, plastics, polymers, wood. Um, there's a bit of an old um, sink unit there that we've cut into the shape of a cat. There's brass and copper. We can cut wood and do some very fine stuff, um, help designers work on their jewelry. Um, this is a piece of uh, titanium that we've been uh, cutting up for a customer who builds equipment for uh, machinery. And we've got a five axis machine, so we can do unusual shapes and sizes and cut rubber, uh, various other bits and bobs. And we have, well, what we think is quite a nice office. That's, that's Julie's desk. Uh, oddly enough, has a very large dragon above it. So for those who don't pay their bills, watch out. Uh, and then a bit of a space here for uh, entertaining uh, reps and those people that want to come and sell you things. And of course, we've just acquired a little 3D printer for doing some R&D work and prototyping on, which we managed to make work. Well, Misha made it work, in fact, not me, um, mainly because there's instructions involved, and we know what men are like with instructions. Here's the first output, which is quite complicated, pretty cool, has internal threads and God knows what. Um, so that sort of worked. We'll go out into the workshop, and I'll show you what we're doing with the trailers. Uh, that says it all, doesn't it? Okay, so that's the water jet machine. It's a bit early. Misha's not here. It's not operating till about 8 o'clock. <clears throat> uh, 12 by 8 bed. It uh, handles a standard sheet of pretty much anything you can get on it. And... Uh, we keep most stuff in stock. That's the operating system and the large pump behind it. Big bag of garnet, of course, because the garnet gets dragged through with the water and helps with the cutting. And we keep a bit of stock on hand so we can satisfy most people. So here's the trailer stuff we're working on. This is the, uh, these are the components we use on the large four wheel trailer. And here's something slightly smaller, which we'll adapt to the two-wheel trailer for the wheelchairs. This is the standard suspension unit that we're designing and using on both trailers. And here's what it looks like before it goes on to the four-wheel trailer. And we're considering a, a lighter, more attractive looking wheel for the uh, wheelchair trailers. And there's other things that we've changed to make it more suited to the wheelchair trailers. This large airbag is the one that we use on the four wheel trailer and it has a shock absorber that'll handle um, the weight that you would expect there. And we can now afford to change to a smaller airbag and a smaller shock absorber uh, for the two wheel trailer, simply because they're lighter. And the other things we're changing is our air system. The air system we used to use, four mil, um, it takes a reasonable amount of time to get all the airbags up and down, so we've moved everything to 10mm. It's much larger, easier, more airflow, and now we're moving to automate the trailer with remote control so that you can drive it up and drive it down, and we've got some solenoids that'll help us push air through where we need it to go. And the trailer will operate entirely off a uh, reasonably small compressor, although these things will handle 150 psi and it runs on the battery which all sits inside that box along with an air tank which is this guy here and once that's uh, bolted into the box with all the fittings we're going to be able to make this trailer go up and down and help people move their large wheelchairs around so that's where we're at right now we've got a bit of stuff in as you can see um, where needed we put electric brakes on probably don't need them for the smaller trailer we've got adjustable height on the uh, front mount for the tow bar connection so for varying heights vehicles that makes it easier to handle and the trailer's not sitting at an angle and we've done quite a bit of work redesigning our suspension component so that we've got 
um, uh, the bender working um, and we're looking at how we can refine this build to make it lighter and stronger but at the moment uh, it ends up looking like this with a an aluminium guard on the top and they do pretty well and they look pretty good on a galvanized trailer so the only thing we're doing here is making a little bit lighter and changing to this magnesium wheel so that again it's lighter to tow um, the wheel doesn't need to be so industrial as it is with this one which is designed for lugging big cars and tractors around and with the weight of the two-wheel trailer uh, we, we should be able to get away with something like this which looks more attractive slightly different offset so that's where we're at um, I want to encourage you if I can to share this film and to share the whole crowdfunding thing you know it's uh, it's called crowdfunding but we need a crowd and um, by myself I'm not a crowd I'm just one and when you all share this around we'll have a significant number of people hopefully as enthusiastic as you are giving us a hand and we don't need much from everybody or anybody we just we just need a little bit um, and that'll get us two trailers built and hopefully we can deliver these before um, Christmas this year so thanks for watching please spread the word bye now